All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here. And um, it's another development stream. Been a while since we did this. But, you know, as I said, I now should have a bit more time and flexibility. So we are going to go back to doing proposals. And I actually want to start from the last proposal we got uh, for one simple reason. I've been using XState in production codes for the past two weeks, I guess. And it's been freaking amazing. So I just want to share how awesome this library is. I want to show it off and I want to basically guide you through, uh, you know, how do you use it in this case with React.js. So you can obviously, you know, the XState itself is um, agnostic to the framework. So you can basically use it with anything you want, be it Vue.js, Angular or whatever. But in this case, you're just going to roll with React. So let's start with uh, talking about what is XState. If you never heard about it, it's basically a set of tools for making state machines and state charts. The state machines is, you know, if you learn computer science, you probably heard about that. Uh, same goes for the state charts, really. But the thing is that overall, this is just a really cool library that allows you to manage state in a very, very simple and predictable way, which just makes it pretty damn amazing, to be honest. So as you can see here, it has the official React view and a bunch of other integrations. Um, there's like, yeah, Emer, Graph Tools, Finite State Machines, if you want to, Testing Utilities. There's no Angular package, although I thought I seen it somewhere, but you know what, whatever. Okay, anyway, uh, so we're going to do the XState and React. Uh, for this case, we would need the XState, XState React package, and then the React itself. So I am going to be very lazy and I'm just going to go create React app and uh, roll with that basically. Um, wait a second. I think we want this for the starting. So let me just bump up the size. I still have. So I found out the reason for this empty screen when you scroll. Um, this is related. This is a bug in Chrome and, you know, the edge goes the same. Uh, that is related to having two monitors that have different refresh rates. So we have like one monitor 60 hertz as my left one that you don't see and the main one which is 144 and if you play if you have two windows of Chrome and one of them is on the slow monitor and the other one on the fast one if you play a video on a slow one which right now I have the Twitch there um, it's just gonna glitch out the main one is gonna refresh basically at lower rate and it's gonna go blank for some reason which is like very annoying, but you know what? Uh, we're going to bear with it. Um, I honestly don't know what this solution would be. I just basically stopped running uh, any um, anything on my off screen. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, hey, Tenzek, welcome to the stream. Okay, so let me think. I've already created the folder, but I guess I can just recreate that again. Uh, let's call it React X State Example. Um, and uh, roll that thing. So we're just going to go with the basic create react tab. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. We don't care about UI styling, whatever. I'm going to be focusing the whole stream uh, basically on the X state and state management. So uh, we're not going to add. I mean, I guess we're going to have to add some CSS at least a bit, but you know, you, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe I should. I mean, the, the problem I have with create react tab is that it's a bit annoying to set up Tailwind with it. So like if you want to use full Tailwind, yes, but if you want to do like, you know, the tree shaking and throwing out the classes and trimming it down, then it's more than trivial, which is, I wish they would just expose the whole uh, post CSS config to make it a lot easier. But anyway, uh, there we go. So we got, come on, React scripts almost finished. Oh yeah, it uses yarn, right? I forgot, I forgot that it defaults to yarn. So let me just sign the commit. There we go. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Um, React create. Okay, so I wonder if my, okay, reload. There we go, cool. So it actually works. Um, so we can now do yarn start, I believe. And we should get, there we go. We should get a window open. So now we should have our basic app running. So we got that. Uh, I guess we can start by uh, killing. So don't care about the tests right now. I don't care about, I mean, CSS, whatever. So we don't need the logo here. We don't need, uh, I guess this is fine. We can leave that. Uh, so we can edit the app a bit and just kill this logo from here. Right. So we're going to have this very lean setup. There we go. Okay, cool. So we have the basic setup. Um, I guess 
Let me just commit that. It remove, whoops, uh, remove unneeded files, right? Okay. So next step would be to add uh, X state and X state react packages. Uh, as I said, you know, we're going to be using the react integration. It's not exactly complex and you probably can just use it without it, but you know, it's just a bit more convenience. Um, okay. So yarn start, right? So uh, there's our, as our app again. And now we are going to start figuring out what we, what we actually want to build. Right, so the idea is um, I want to build the app that is complex enough to demonstrate all the parts uh, of X state or basically what it provides, right? But I also don't want to go overboard. So uh, what I want to do is number one, we're going to have authentication with a fake um, API that will basically have a hard-coded user. But, you know, just to show you that how would you handle an authentication using X state. We're gonna have uh, some sort of a workspace or a list of things that is basically gonna be fetched from somewhere. Again, maybe fake API, maybe we'll take something like Hacker News or um, I don't know, Pokemon API as usual. And then we're gonna have the specific item view, be it the Hacker News article or a specific Pokemon or whatever. And maybe Hacker News would work a bit better here. Uh, so that we can actually demonstrate the nesting of the mach state machines within each other. So the actors pattern, which is um, something that helps a lot, but it takes quite some time to actually figure out how to do that. All oh, right, I forgot one thing. We also want React uh, router, right? Uh, so I think this is the URL that I want. So we want some routing here because we're going to have like a couple of views. Uh, God damn it, I really hate this bug. <laughs> So uh, where is the documentation? There we go. Uh, web quick start. Yes, so we do that. Install React Router DOM. This is all we need. Yarn adds React Router DOM. Okay, so we're gonna set up the routing and then we're gonna do the basic authentication, which again, as I said, we're not gonna do backends this time around. Just the fake API calls, I guess. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do that and we are gonna have some nested views. So where I guess I'm just gonna do it here. Mm, we got the router. Yeah, so we are gonna have router over here, right? And then this is gonna be our header and then we're gonna have a switch here, which is gonna have roots, uh, sorry, no roots, right? And um, I don't remember honestly how you define that. So I'm gonna cheat a bit and have a look here. There we go, right path. And then we're gonna have a home. So our app is gonna act as this core layout, I guess. Um, that is a wrong way to paste it. And we're gonna have a separate set of components that basically gonna have our um, things. Okay, so let me, I guess, first of all, we're gonna create a components folder. And then I'm gonna create an app folder. And I'm going to just throw the app in there because it's just nicer to work with, right? So we're going to um, app here. I'm going to rename this to index.js so that, whoops, that is too, too many JS. Um, there we go. Okay, so now we got that. Uh, we got index, which is going to be set up. This is going to be um, components app. I think I need to do some tweaks for that to work, if I remember correctly. Uh, oh, right, I don't have it running. I was like, why doesn't this work? Come on. Okay, so there's probably gonna be some errors right now because I forgot to change some settings or something. Yeah, okay, so there is react creates app resolve from a root. I remember there was a property that you have to set so that it basically automatically does the absolute imports, but I don't remember which one was. I think it was like an envar or something. Uh, hey, Wise, welcome to the stream. Okay, uh, yes, this is exactly what I want. I want node path. Okay, right. So we want um, new file dot env and we want to set this to source. There we go. But I think that was actually the old way of doing that and it will complain with a warning. No, man, I don't remember anything. <laughs> uh, wait a second. No, no, no. There was, there was messages. There was messages. You just, oh, come on. PM start. Will that reset the messages as well? Yeah. Okay. Setting node path result, blah, blah, blah. Base URL in JS config JSON. There we go. So we don't need that. 
Um, we need um, JS config dot um, JSON, I think, right? Uh, and set the base URL base URL to source. So I think this should do it. Interesting picture and picture isn't working on Chrome anymore. Um, that sounds weird. It should be working. I mean, I think like they enabled it like a few versions ago. Why would it stop working now? Okay, cannot resolve components app. Uh, am I missing something again? Did I create a wrong thing? Fail to compile components app. Um, Okie dokie, what am I missing? Okay, wait a second. I am definitely doing something wrong, but uh, wait a second. JS config base URL. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Captain Eric, welcome to the stream. Maybe just Twitch turn it off. Yeah, I mean, Twitch might be using some weird third party, like, you know, the overall player, like player add ons or whatever. I think it only works if you have, like, the video tag. Uh, Kepler, we are building React app with X state as uh, management, uh, as the state management solution. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. I forgot the compiler options. There we go. So now we should be able to import uh, components just by using the absolute path, which makes uh, things a lot easier. Can I resolve components app? What do you mean you can resolve components app? Okay components oh right because i'm importing the wrong thing there we go now it should work and now it will complain that it can resolve home which makes perfect sense because we need to add new folder home and we need to add index.js here which is i'm just going to be lazy and copy that we don't need a ruler here i guess we can just do the basic diff for now and uh da -da 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 -da. H1 home, right? So I'm just going to do that. And uh, right, I should rename that to home. And if we now import home from components home, there we go. Uh, what? Oh, I am doing that in a completely wrong place. There we go. We should have done this over here, right? There we go. Okay, so now uh, we got the home page, which makes perfect sense. And uh, right, so for um, Okay, so we got that, we got the rotor set up, we got the home page. Uh, now we have to um, create our state, right? So let's go ahead and create the state thing. And we're gonna have our primary state machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead to the X state docs and there is um, da -da 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 getting started guide. This is what we wanna start with. So essentially, we are going to create a state machine, right? So the main API that XState exposes is this state API, and then uh, let's just call it app machine and do export default app machine. Right, so um, let's call it app and initial state would be init. So the way XState works is that you define a state machine, right? As we said multiple times, but the idea is that you define a thing that has a number of states and can switch between them using events that user sends. It sounds like if you, when you look at it, it is a lot like Redux, right? But a lot easier to set up and makes, at least, you know, in my opinion, it makes a lot more sense and allows you to split it in atomic way uh, and uh, allows... So the, my problem with Redux is it's really hard to nest things, especially when you get like, you know, different entities nested, I don't know, posts and you have actions on posts and you get this incredibly complex system with events that just gets annoying. XState allows you to nest state machines, which allow you to basically define specific actions and states for specific items like a post item, right? Uh, so yeah, well, we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Um, I'm still having problem designing a proper session management for React. Uh, I mean, session management is usually something that you handle on a server mostly, right? But anyway, uh, going back to the state machine. So we're gonna have our init state. Um, and before we continue, we're gonna have our context. So context on state machines is basically what holds your data, right? So you can have a state which describes the state your machine is, and then you have a context that describes the additional metadata. Let me just uh, 
which of my things uh, doesn't annoy me. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, so in our case, this context would host, uh, let's say a user, right? So we're going to have a user, which by default is undefined. And then we're going to have, we're going to start with authentication. So I'm going to create an authentication state. Um, I should probably put a comma over here. And now here's the deal. So authentication is more than just one state, right? So at least it's going to be three states. So we're going to have authentication started, right? And this is when we send the request to server, we're going to have authentication successful. This is when we get the um, answer from the backend and the backend says, you're actually logged in. And we're going to have a third state which has authentication failed, right? So let's do that. So um, start it. We're going to have um, success and we're going to have fail, right? So we got, we have that. Um, for now, we're just defining those and I know it might be confusing at first, but bear with me. We're going to get to the point where it all starts to make sense, right? So we define those states, right? So now we act actually have to uh, do something, right? So we have to figure out what exactly, uh, how exactly do we actually use the machine. Well, there is this is where the react package comes in. So there is did I, I didn't open the yeah, there we go. There's a react package. Uh, it has a set of utilities where you can uh, work with state machines, x state machines specifically within react. And the first one is this use machine uh, hook, which uh, makes basically everything easy. So we are gonna I'm just gonna wire up the hook in our um, primary app component and then use context to pass the machine around because you only want to have one state machine, right? In this case, at least. So we're going to import our um, from so this is going to be state, right? So we're going to import our app state, uh, I guess, let's call it app machine and be consistent in this case. Hey, front end nexus, welcome to the stream. Okay, so we are going to have use machine app machine, right? So this will create this will create a new um, state machine subscription, which will return our current machine and send to machine function. So this is basically our primary tools of communication. Uh, the state, the current machine reference is basically the current state context and a bunch of other tools and send to machine is a way to dispatch events. Um, thank you for the congratulations. Uh, you know, highly appreciate it. Okay, uh, now we are gonna create so I guess I should have done this slightly different. So I'm gonna export this as a named export. And in addition, I'm gonna export const um, machine context, I'm gonna create a new react um, create context, there we go. So I'm gonna create a new context, probably just do that. There we go. And we are going to use that context. So first of all, we got to switch that up, right? So we got app machine and machine context. We are going to wrap everything into machine context. Uh, yeah, that should be machine context dot provider if I remember correctly. There we go. And whoa, that is too much stuff. Okay, and then the value would be current machine and send to machine, right? There we go. So we set this up. Okay, um, now, now we have access to this specific context from anywhere. So we can just grab this our state machine from any component we want, and read the state from there, right. So this is a pretty straightforward setup, very similar to what you would do with, um, you know, use state or whatever, there's like a bunch of solutions that work in a similar way. Now let's do the so let's turn the home routes. Uh, let's okay, for first of all, let's add the login components, right? Um, to do, let's call it index.js. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be lazy and copy the home for now, throw it into the login and say, Okay, this is gonna be a login now. I probably should have used rename for that. But whatever. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so this is gonna be login, right? And it's gonna be login and now auto import perfect, everything works as expected. So now let's turn this route into protected route, right? So we want to only work when the so we want to on ugh, let me try that again, we only want to allow user accessing that route when he is authenticated, right? So in this case, we're going to use our state machine as the source of truth for authentication. And I think there was an example with the private 
private routes uh, somewhere. Oh, there we go. I think this was it. Come on now. Okay, cool. Uh, there was this private routes. There we go. This is exactly the component that we want. So I'm just going to copy that. We're going to take this component, just create it in the exactly same way. Private routes. And then we're going to make an index.js over here. And it's going to be export default function private routes. Okay, uh, so we need to import. Uh, right, why don't you want to import stuff from router? Okay, so we need routes and we need a redirect from here. I think that is why are you complaining? Okay, because we want react from react, right? So we got the react here. There we go. Okay, now here's yeah, here's the deal. So we need an additional thing here, we need some way. So in this case, they have this fake oath that is basically tells the um, tells the router if the route is authenticated, right? So we are gonna instead uh, use our uh, machine. So I'm gonna pass it as a property here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, so we now have our machine, right? We're gonna say, okay, machine, uh, whoops, I apparently cannot type. And we're going to get the context, right? And from context, we're going to take our user. And basically, what is going to give us, I'm going to say if the user is not undefined, I'm going to render our children. And if the user is undefined, we're going to redirect to login, right? So what we do now is we say that home is a private route. Um, I probably right. And then we have the machine property, which would point to our current machine. So that should theoretically build and work now that is a wrong window. What am I pressing? Uh, let me go here. So there's our app. Uh, and if I try to open the login now it redirects me to sorry, the homepage, it redirects me to login successfully. So we set this, we set the authentication bit up, right? Okay, so now let's do the login thing. Um, let me think for a second. So we don't need that yet. We need the login page. And I'm just gonna I'm just going to create a couple of inputs, right? So this is going to be type text, uh, placeholder, username, I'm not going to bother too much with, uh, you know, the whole like accessibility, and proper labels and everything is going to be very fast and very dirty, but um, it's going to work somehow. <laughs> so we got this, right? So this theoretically, our login screen should now have two things here. There we go. And we're gonna have a um, button that is gonna have a label called login, right? And that's actually all we need here, right? So we're gonna, I mean, <laughs> I feel really bad for leaving it like this, but you know what? Not gonna, not gonna bother about CSS right now. We're just gonna keep it like, uh, I mistyped word password. So this now should be, there we go. Okay, cool. So I got that. Now we have to wire this thing up to the state machine, right? So we got our state here, which uh, currently isn't it. Um, what we actually should do is, I mean, yeah, in this case, we actually should, but okay, we can do that later. I'm just thinking that we should, you know, auto redirect the user if he's already logged in to the home page, but we can handle that later. That's fine. Anyway, uh, login, right? So we got that. Let's wire up. Uh, the refs, so user ref is gonna be use ref, uh, what, no, use ref, there we go. And pass ref is gonna be use ref as well. No, what, come on. Okay, so ref is gonna be user ref, and this ref is gonna be pass ref. And here on click, we're going to go do login, right? So we're going to have this do login uh, function that will uh, execute. So I guess we should have event here and we should prevent. I mean, I guess in this case, it doesn't matter if it prevented because the page is too small to jump anyway. Okay, so uh, username is going to be equal user ref current value and password is going to be equal pass ref current value. Any advantages of using use ref over simple hooks? What do you mean by simple hooks? You mean like the state and controlling the change and everything? Uh, I mean, the, the 
Simplest thing is that I don't have to, you know, do all on change or whatever right now because I don't care about them. Normally, you actually want to do full control because you need validation and everything. In this case, I don't care. This is just faster. <laughs> but no, there is no, not a real advantage uh, over that. Okay, um, username pass. So in this case, we won't have access. Uh, yes, use state. So in this case, we won't have, we won't, we won't know the value unless the user clicks on a button, right? So this is kind of the downside. So let me fire up, uh, let me just zoom in, I guess, for you. There we go. As the console, I type in, click login. We got our username and password. This works as expected. So now we need to do a login, right? Uh, which means we actually have to have access to our state machine. So what we're gonna do, again, I'm gonna use the hooks and in this case is gonna be use context, right? And we're gonna use machine context, which is gonna be auto imported from our state thing. And it's gonna be machine and send to machine. So in this case, we don't care about machine yet, but we do care about send to machine. So what we have to do is we have to send an event saying that uh, I need to log in, right? And here's my username and password. And let me be, I guess, um, let me be complete here and just type password properly because I'm always being lazy about that. All right, so this will send an event to machine that we need to handle. We don't really do that yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add event handling. So this is on property that will uh, take the any events that come into machine and work with them. And we're gonna have our login event, right? So in this case, we're gonna say that if user sends login, then we're gonna be target, uh, so go to auth.started, right? So this is this is it, this is all we have to do. We just say change state to auth started, right? And now in auth started, we're gonna do all the work. So this is what's gonna happen. Now, the, uh, the way you, you do it is you actually use, uh, what are you not happy about, uh, app auth, Started does not exist on app auth. Um, what am I missing? Uh, is that, I think this is what you want? No. What am I, what am I doing wrong? You want complete path, uh, app auth. Oh, no, wait, I am. Oh, God damn it. I'm <laughs> right. I forgot the states keyword because those are sub states and I haven't defined them as such. There we go. This is what I was missing. I, I still, I'm still like, even though I coded for with um, X state for about a week now, I'm still forgetting to do the state keywords and everything, which sometimes bugs me out. Okay, anyway, so we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we don't, we do need that, I guess. Maybe, maybe we, okay, whatever. Let's, let's just keep it there for now. Right, so now, uh, how do you handle the, so how do you actually change the context, change the state, do things? Well, there's a concept of services, right? So the idea is that you can start a service, invoke a service. A uh, service can be anything that is a promise, a callback, observable, or another machine. We're gonna come back to that a bit later. In this case, we're gonna use a promise uh, just because it's easier. And uh, we're gonna define a service in line just like this here. So I'm gonna copy this example and paste it into the start it. Uh, hey, Lamjacker, welcome to the stream. Okay, in this case, the service is called get user, which in our case doesn't make sense. So it's gonna be a login service, right? Let's call it do login, because why not? And uh, it's gonna run a function. So in this case, uh, you can, it can be any function you want. It doesn't have to use context. It doesn't have to use event, but the context is essentially the context that is currently set on the state machine and event is whatever you send. So in our case, event is gonna be username and password or have the username and password as additional data. And um, I'm just gonna go and say, okay, so here we have our do login function that is asynchronous because we wanna return a promise and it's gonna be, context and events, right? And I'm just gonna basically say do login over here, right? Okay, uh, next what happens is it will automatically handle the done or error. Done means the promise resolved successfully. Error means the promise have thrown something, right? And uh, here's what happens. Once it's done, it's gonna switch to the success state 
And it's also going to execute an action, which is a side effect. And in this case, it's going to assign, I should probably import that. Uh, no, you are keep, for some reason, my VS code keeps importing the X state things from wrong path, but we're going to fix that. Okay, so it's going to assign a user from our event data that is returned from our action, from our service, right? And the same goes for error. So I guess we should define error here, and it's going to be undefined as well. So if we are succeeded, the user should be set into the state. If we fail, the error message should be in there, and it should switch to fail state. So there you go. Okay, uh, now do login, right? So we got our context, which means that we're going to have, uh, we're going to get username and password from events. Let me just console log username password. And then I'm going to return. So in this case, for now, I'm just going to say, okay, here's my username and password back because we don't really have anything. And theoretically, once we now press that login button, we should actually see the console log from that, right? So go one to three, one to three, login. There you go. So this is actually coming from our service, which is great. Hey, Mother Putra, welcome to the stream. Okay, so we set this up. Let's add a bit of logic. Let's say uh, that if username not equals, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, God, this is too hard. Hello, and password is not 103. Then we're going to throw new error. Error logging. Uh, okay, I guess wrong uh, username or password, right? So there you go. So we now have the fail state. And we can actually handle that, right? So Okay, so here we are, we send the message. Now we have to handle the different states. So first of all, let's handle the error because that's the easy bit, right? So we got another div here. And we're going to say, okay, so if machine matches, uh, sorry, matches, there we go. Uh, t -t 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 -t, come on, let's do that. And so we're going to do h2, for example. And we're going to do I guess I do need uh, context now. So we're going to say machine, uh, whoops, machine context. And this is going to be error, right? So we get the error from the context and say, okay, if there is any error, just uh, whoops, that is a wrong thing. Just print it out, right? And in this case, we're going to match a with fail. So if, if our machine is in the state a with fail, we're going to print out the error. Let's try that. So theoretically, if I print anything but the whoa, okay, I, I broke something, something went wrong. Uh, um, oh, I guess because the right, this is an error object. So we should do that. There we go. Uh, that is a really large message. Maybe we should do it like I don't know, H, I guess this could be P with a style. Um, color red or something, right? There we go. That's, <laughs> that's a bit better. I, I guess we don't even need P here, we could just do a div. And so I'm just gonna do inline style, color red, there we go. Um, right, I don't think that's how you do styles in react, right? This is what it wants. Okay. So again, if we do that, there you go, wrong username or passwords, exactly what we expected. And if you notice, we didn't actually do anything, we just handled the correct state, right? The same goes for the success. So now we want to say, okay, if user is uh, logged in, right, and in this case is going to be a success, we actually want to redirect the user to the uh, homepage, right? So this is going to go redirect to home. Okay. And I need to import redirect because for some reason React Router DOM does not expose it correctly. I still don't understand why, but I don't know, VS Code doesn't pick it up for some reason, at least in on this machine. Okay, so if I do that, we're gonna fail. If I do hello one, two, three, if I click login, there we go. We are now logged in. How awesome is that? All it took is just like a few lines of code. The cool thing is that uh, you can chain those, right? So if you go to success, and if you need to do any other actions, you can do another service invocation and continue this chain of switching states until you reach the state you actually want, which makes it super flexible. 
Now, here's another awesome thing. Um, we're actually not bound to um, put in the, like, because, you know, already we just have the authentication and this state machine is getting pretty large, right? Uh, but the cool thing is that we're not bound to doing this in one specific way. So I'm going to extract that authentication logic into a separate file because uh, why not? So I'm going to just copy the whole thing. So we don't need this context. We don't need um, machine here. We just need a sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so we got this const, which is auth, and it equals this um, auth definition that we have, right? There you go. That's, that's all we wanted, right? So we now have authentication completely separate. I'm going to export this const from here. And what we do now is we say, okay, so import from auth and I import my guy, come on now, auth. And instead of doing all of that here, I just do this, right? So we still need this event to be global because it could be fired from any state. Um, you can have state local events, but you know, in this case, it, um, we want it global because we want to authenticate from any state ever. For example, if you log out and you're like in a logout state, you still want to be able to authenticate. So right now we should be able to still authenticate in exactly the same way. And now we have the authentication nicely separated into a completely different file. Okay, cool. So we did that. Uh, now we got the um, main, right? So the home page. Uh, let's do, let's do, I guess the hacker news would be the easiest one, right? So hacker news. Uh, there is hacker news API. We're just going to use those. And uh, I believe there was like a, it, it even supported the course. So we are just gonna, did it? I think it did, right? Um, hacker news. Um, here's, a, here's a question. Does it support course? Developers don't understand course. No, that's not. Okay, let's try Google. Maybe Google is a bit smarter with regards to that. Um, course. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's try it anyway. We can, we can try it. So let's go ahead and take a story, comment, ask job. We want a list of new top and best stories. There you go. So we want that thing, right? Uh, okay, so let's again, start with our, uh, let's define, I guess, list state, right? So this is gonna be our state that has lists of things and then is gonna have states again we're going to have a bunch of them uh, because we're going to be loading and displaying states and in this case initial state is going to be uh, loading right so we're going to define a loading state and um, again i'm going to define a service here and i'm just going to be so first of all let me just uh, okay we don't need that here anymore right and const uh, so stories url is going to be this uh, we don't need this pretty printing. Okay, and I'm gonna copy this state from, so we no longer need login, we no longer need that. And now we need to copy the service from here because I never remember the correct signature. I guess if I use TypeScript, I would probably get suggestions, but I'm too lazy for that. Okay, so this is our fetch stories service, right? And then I've got to be fetch stories function that we are gonna define over here. It's gonna be a sync. And now we are gonna, okay, so we do need that assign from X state. And we also need an, whoops, an array of stories over here. Um, let's keep it empty by default. Okay, so stories, and we need to define additional states. So we got our loading state and we're gonna have, again, success. Uh, I mistyped that somehow, and we're gonna have a fail state, right? So uh, here's the cool thing about the state machine. So imagine you have this fetch stories thing that might fail and you know you have to retry multiple times. So what can happen is when you go to fail state, you can actually trigger retry immediately by just redirecting back to loading, which is just mind blowing when you think about it. Like I'm just, I'm really in love with this library. It's just so damn awesome. But anyway, um, back to fetching stories now. Um, uh, did I mistype initial? Yes, I did. Okay, I am terrible at typing apparently. 
Anyway, uh, so we are now here, we got to fetch our stories, right? So uh, we got the context we got. So in our case, we don't care about context or events, whatever triggers it, we just want to fetch stories, right? So going to fetch stories URL. Um, result is going to be then our, our bleh, come on, our JSON, there we go. And I think that is going to return a bunch of um, so pretty true. So this is going to return just an array of numbers exactly. So you can assign behavior to action. It's not really behavior. It's like the service is a really good word for it. It's literally a service that does something, right? And then you can just once uh, the service have like the service is invoked when once, once you enter the state. There's also like guards and conditions and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we're gonna probably go over some of it uh, a bit later. But anyway, so we got this story thing. Now we got to um, resolve the stories, which means that we need that the URL on story data the URL. Okay, so this is gonna be that and uh, how do I do that? I guess I do it like this ID and then I return and this is gonna be okay. So this should be template literal and this should be ID. And um, let's call it get story data URL. Okay, so this is gonna be an array story IDs. And then we're gonna say top 10 the top 10 stories. So I'm gonna uh, get the top 10, which is going to be story IDs slice and first 10, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to map them. So we got the ID, we're going to map it to get uh, story data URL. And I'm going to, uh, okay, first of all, uh, I'm going to map it again. So this is already going to be URL, which means I'm going to fetch it and then get the JSON. Right. Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. There we go. Okay, but that's going to return an array of promises, which means we're going to await promise all, right? So we're going to wait for all of those promises to turn into a nice JSON stories. And then we're going to return top 10 stories, which means that if this, uh, okay, let me just save so it formats it. So if this run is successful, we're going to get an array of stories saved into our uh, context, right? Okay, so now we don't care about Auth anymore. We want our homepage. Now we need to trigger this, right? So there's a couple of ways about going around that. So first of all, once we go to Auth, we could say, okay, load the stories once you get home. But the thing is, you might not transfer from those, right? So this is a bit tricky. And in this case, I think the easiest solution would be to actually just, um, get the machine and send to machine and do it with an event because the user might not come to home from the authentication, right? He already might be authenticated, for example. I'm gonna use machine con, uh, no, 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 machine context, there we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna use effect and it's basically just gonna, once, once the user loads into the home page, we're gonna send to machine, whoops, Send to machine, we're gonna say load stories. So every time we load the home page, we're gonna ask for new stories because you know, you might have navigated somewhere and this, I mean, usually you have a better conditions, but this is sort of the test app, but yeah. I can't remember when that simple line of promises were a huge bunch of code. Yeah, it, like, I mean, a sync await make things so much nicer. Okay, so now we have to define that event, right? So we are gonna have another event load stories. And all it's going to do is just going to say uh, list loading, right? So we actually don't need this initial state here. We just uh, gonna I mean, I guess you could do initial state and then just throw it into the list itself. But all we have to do is just switch state to list loading. That's it. That's literally all we have to do. Now, here's the question. <laughs> Does the API actually has core support or not? Uh, so I'm going to hit the login and actually anything happen? It actually okay, so we got holy shit, that is a lot of stories. Um, it does seem to load the stories number, but it doesn't seem to load the where's my other requests? What is happening? Okay, did I screw something up? 
let's see here. So we got um, okay. Let's just let's just do the good old console log debugging. So story IDs, right? So we got the story IDs. Um, da -da -da, let me just uh, do this. Return. Okay, yeah, I guess const URL. Return URL. Okay, uh, console log URL. Okay, let's see if that actually prints anything for us. Um, I should probably pre-fill this login because it's a bit annoying. Story IDs is a promise. Oh, I forgot. Okay, yeah, there you go. There's my mistake. I forgot to await that. There you go. Now it should work. Okay, yeah, as usual, I typically forget one small keyword and then bash my head for like half an hour trying to figure out what is wrong. All right, login. And uh, our network, there we go. There's a bunch of our requests, but we don't really log anything. So now we have to um, handle that, right? So first of all, let's handle the um, loading state, right? So if we are list loading, we're just going to say h2 loading. There you go. As easy as that. Now we're showing the loading indicator. If we have matches list uh, fail, right, we're gonna say, okay, uh, div um, style color red, but not ref red. So div close the div error loading stories, and we're gonna show. Um, yeah, right, I should probably get the context. Let me do this a bit smaller. So we're gonna get the machine, uh, no machine context. So we need uh, error and we need stories, right? So there we go. And this is gonna be error to string. So this is, there we go, okay. So let me just check this out, one, two, three, login. So we know she's loading, there we go, it's loaded, no error, so we don't see that. And uh, now we just have to actually uh, render the stories, right? So if machine matches list uh, success, then we do, let's make it a new component because you know, it's just gonna be easier to handle stories. Okay. State machine is like switch, but global. Eh, I mean, kind of, yeah, you could compare it to the switch statements. Uh, it's, it's basic, like, this is what the sort of the logical evolution of Redux, right? And uh, the, the main, so like the thing about the state machines, they don't really save you time or effort in writing because you still have to describe all those states but they save you mental effort because in the end, you're gonna to have to describe those states anyway, somehow, be it the Redux, be it just the use state and use context in React, you're gonna have this description somewhere anyway. X state just allows you to do that in a structured manner that is very, very easy to reason about. Like you have a look at the authentication and you know immediately what's gonna happen, right? So we enter the started state, we run the service, it's gonna do login, and if it's success, we're gonna get the user, if it fails, we're gonna get the error. That's it. Really easy to read. Like, and this is what it's amazing about it. But anyway, so we need to do the stories components. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to create an index.js. And we are going to have, uh, right, so first of all, there's going to be stories. Uh, we don't, I don't think, do we need a machine? Uh, I mean, we could, mm, okay, let me see. Uh, anyway, just, let's just, let's just, okay, for now, let's just say, it's gonna be very stupid. It's gonna be pre, be JSON, stringify stories, null two, right? So for now, let's just render that as stupid array. Okay, so import stories from stories. There we go, that looks fine. Why is there a debugger here? Okay, let's try that. Theoretically, we should now see a nice JSON of stories. There we go. That works perfectly fine. Okay, so um, I should probably save one of those entries to actually be able to render anything. Okay, cool. So now we got this. Uh, first of all, okay, let's just render the list properly, shall we? That sounds like a good idea. Um, so stories map story, and now we're going to have a div 
um, that is gonna have. So what do we have here? We got um, we got an ID. So that's yeah. Let's do a key is gonna be story ID. Then we're gonna have a title. We're gonna have a URL. So let's do a href um, story URL. Um, term store. Uh, come on, story title. This is all the boring bit, basically. I don't think we care about any. I mean, we could print time, but you know what? Whatever. That's like doesn't matter. Okay, so if we save that. I should really do something about persisting the login information, but you know what? Uh, let me just be lazy and pre-fill that. Um, so the um, yeah, I guess default values of what I want to use is gonna be hello, and default value is gonna be one or three. Okay, there we go. So I can just click login, load the stories. There we go. We got our stories. Why are they centered? I guess there's some CSS leftovers from, yeah, there we go. So we don't need that. Okay, let's just add some padding. Okay, that, that looks fine. Um, why is there no URL here? Interesting. For some reason, there is no URL to that story. Um, right, so what am I? Okay, so we're now rendering the stories. But what we actually want to have is instead of, you know, right now, if I click on that, that's obviously going to open a link in a new uh, page, which is not something that we want, right? So what we want instead is viewing, I don't know, let's say, so what, what kind of API do we have? Example story comments, right? So we want, let's load the comments for it, right? And let's do it in a way. So obviously the stupid way would be to uh, store the comments on the same state machine that we have right now, which, you know, in this case would work perfectly fine, right? But once you have the larger app and you actually do more than just one action upon one entity, it's gonna get complicated. So one of the cool things about XState is that it actually allows you to create child state machines, right? So we're gonna have uh, another thing that's gonna be called the story.js. I'm just gonna copy this machine and uh, we don't need that. We don't need context. So it's gonna be story machine, right? And in this case, we actually want a function that's gonna create a new story machine using the story data. So it's gonna take in the story data and it's gonna create a new machine. Right, so you know, we're gonna do that. Uh, it's gonna be story and we are gonna have a bunch of states for this story. Hey Lenit, welcome to the stream. All right, so let me kill that. We don't need any events for now. So there we go. We now have our small, nice story machine, right? So what do we do with that? Well, we need to actually uh, make it work, right? So we need to assign it to selected story. So let's say that we have selected story that is currently gonna be undefined. And um, then we're basically gonna have a select state over here and I completely forgot how to do that. So I'm gonna go into the um, da -da 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 -da, actions. I think it was actions. So we got, no, it wasn't, was it actions? Um, da -da -da, transitions, event, actors. I think it was an example in actors, but uh, hell if I remember invoked machines. Yes, this is what we want. So there we go. Okay, source. Uh, okay, this is invoked machines. No, we need actor spawning machines. There we go. Okay, uh, online after we don't care about that. So we do events. Yeah, so I guess we could just do it on events. Uh, do we want to do it on events or do we want it on entry? I guess we want to do it. I mean, events should be fine, right? Uh, so uh, let's call it selected because we are going to have the story selected. I was gonna have, we're gonna have an event select story, right? That's gonna target. So it's basically gonna switch our um, current states to list selected. And then it's gonna have an actions and one action that is gonna be a sign on text events. And it's gonna basically assign. So in this case, it's gonna be a bit more complex than before. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say that, okay, so we have our new, uh, or I guess let's call it story. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, new story, let's call it new story machine. 
And then we're going to say create story machine from events data, right? So we're going to take whatever the events brings in, consider that to be a story or mm, do I want to do that? Yeah, well, why not? Yeah, let's do it this way. I guess, okay, you know what? Let's just do it a bit more. Hmm. Here's the question. Yeah, whatever. Let's just do it this way. It doesn't matter really. And then we're going to return, uh, whoops. No, 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 no. Return. And we're going to say that current, uh, no, wait, what was it? Selected story is new story machine, right? Uh, right. I forgot one more thing. We cannot just create the machine because this will not um, propagate any changes or, you know, make it work. We actually want to spawn it. This is an important thing to remember. So we create the machine, we spawn it, and then we store it in the current context. It imported spawn from the correct place. There we go. Okay. So now um, here in our list, okay, first of all, we would need some changes to our home. Uh, we would edit this later. So in this case here, we don't really need to do anything else. So we select the story and we're done, right? So it doesn't matter. Now, what is important for us, uh, we don't care about the login anymore and we don't care about the authentication anymore. Okay, so here's the thing. We need to actually, um, how do I do that? I mean, I still would want to persist the link, but whatever. So we're just going to do diff, um, I guess let's do it and um, yeah, we want to link it, right? So we got a link and this is going to be link. Come on, import. So this is going to be our link from react router DOM to, uh, and we're going to link to story and this is going to be story ID, right? So there we go just to make this, you know, a bit more persistent, I guess. And right, so there we go. This is going to link us here. And I think we actually have to will that Yeah, that should work. Uh, okay, so here now we should uh, create another nested router that would handle our um, stories rendering basically. Okay, so let me just import that. Uh, we don't need this, I need a switch and a route. There we go. Okay, so home should be still rendering as we expected. Switch route store uh, story, and then we got ID, right? So we don't need that here. Div class, uh, no, sorry. Um, to do them. Story selected. Uh, so let's just see that it actually works. We should see that. If I didn't screw anything up, that should actually work. Come on now. There we go. Okay, I screwed something up, I think. This does Oh yeah, because I've used A's without um yeah, yeah, right, right, right. That should actually be wrapped in divs because otherwise they won't be properly formatted. Uh no 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 no. There we go. That's what I want. Try that again. There we go. If I click that, there we go. Story selected. So we're navigated to the store link. Now we just have to format this a bit nicer. Um, let me think for a second. So we want, I guess we want to, so we don't need this anymore. We want this to be split into two parts, right? So we can do a div style. I'm just going to use style because I'm lazy. No, 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 no display. Like I would prefer using like tailwind or something, but, uh, it's just too annoying to set up with create react app and display. Flex. Um, yeah, I guess we can just wrap like double flexes and that should be sufficient, right? So we have the left one here, this is going to be our thing and the right one would have the switch that would handle the nested routes, right? Okay, so theoretically. And yeah, okay, so it doesn't um, doesn't scale properly. But uh, it's Oh, yeah, it's big because I zoomed in, right? I was like, why is it so damn big? Okay, I, it looks it looks fine, right? So I guess we could say that this one is uh, max with like 300 or something. There we go. So if we select the story that looks fine. Okay, so now we spawn this state machine, right? That is the story state machine. 
uh, doo -doo -doo, let me think. So we don't need that. We need our main thing. So we got the selected story, right? And we actually want to render it or want to use it for our interaction with the rest of the logic, right? So we're going to use that state machine, which means that I'm going to create a new component it's called story. Um, Robbie Trox TV, thank you for the follow. Okay, uh, so we create. Uh, well, uh, no, it created the wrong thing. God damn it! I probably misclicked. Right? <laughs> Index.js. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna copy. Um, so we don't need state anymore. I'm gonna copy the home, I guess. Okay, uh, it's gonna be story, and it's gonna get selected story as the property, right? So in this case, we're not gonna use any of that. We are. I'm gonna kill all of that. All right, so here's the thing. Um, so what's what is created when you um, use the uh, nested machine is a service that you can subscribe to using the use service hook, which is exactly what we're gonna do now. Service. It is an uh, XState React thing. Like you can still do this with just plain XState. It's just an additional um, handy utility, basically. But it works exactly the same way as working with machines. So it's going to give us a story service and it's going to give us send to story function that allows us, uh, well, to story, allows us to send events, right? And in this case, we're going to say, okay, const. Um, there's going to be story service context, and it's going to be story for now. And I'm just going to do the lazy thing. JSON stringify null to, uh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot the story bit here. There we go. So it's just gonna, whenever we select the story, all right, I should probably include it over here. Story. There we go. So this is going to be selected story. And this basically wires up our uh, second state machine. I screwed something up. <laughs> Let's try to figure out what. Can read property state of undefined. Okay, did I not selected story? So we should have the selected story, right? Did I miss a context story, right? So we should have that. I did use the service and the use services from X state react. So this looks correct. Story service, this looks correct as well. Um, and it says cannot read story, can read state of undefined. Okay, so use machine fails, which means that this selected story is probably null. Did I forget to set it in the index? So return selected story, new story machine. Oh, oh, um, no, wait, I, I am assigning it, right? So I'm returning it, yeah, that should be fine. List selected, okay. And uh, where was I? Oh, right, I'm an idiot. Right, I forgot one important bit. We list the stories, I did the link transition, but I forgot to actually dispatch the event, right? Select story, and I guess this should be select, uh, come on. Select story, story. There we go. So this is what I want to do. Okay, so we're going to have select story function that actually should send the send, send to machine. And uh, where is, we don't need that yet. We don't need home now. Okay, we need the index one. So we need select story. And then we need to send the story itself. Now we are missing this send to machine. We could grab it from context, but since this is basically rendered from here, I can just pass it using props, right? Which, I mean, I know that not everyone likes prop drilling, but in this case, it's just one property. So that shouldn't hurt too much. There we go. So this should actually, once we click it, it should not only navigate to that page, but also select this. Obviously there are different ways of handling that, but uh, in this case, we're gonna do the stupid way. Um, and I still, I guess this is not good enough way. Okay, um, let me think for a second. So we actually want, 
How do I handle this? How did I do it in my last project? <laughs> I'm starting to forget things, which is a bit annoying. So yeah, what we could do is we could actually, instead of doing this here, we could do it reactively in, in the home page, right? So once the route changes, what we need to do is in this story thing, we need to first select the story by ID, right? So it's, it's gonna change the logic just a bit, but that means that we will have the way to refresh the page and still see the story. So what we're gonna do is we actually have to access the React router, which I closed. Um, so we want a hook that tells us use params is what we want, right? And do, 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 do. let me think. So yeah, I guess I just grabbed this bit. Const, and we're gonna have ID from params, right? And do, do, do. that means that, yeah, so we will, nah, that's, that, feels, that feels backwards. Although I guess it does make sense anyway. Uh, let me think. So we got that. We're going to get ID from params, which means that the problem is you cannot run the hooks conditionally. So this won't work. Let me let me ponder for a second. So what can we do? Obviously, we could have some other wrapper that does all the setup for us, which I mean, where you have it, right? Um, I'm just pondering what would be the best way. Like, okay, we could, we could actually do it properly and um, declaratively, I guess, right? So this is gonna be in button, or I guess a, in this case, da, 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 instead of sending it. No, okay, you know, we, we still want the link, right? So we want to navigate. We could navigate with history, but that would be annoying. No, we don't wanna navigate because we, this, okay, this is what breaks everything. So we actually want a proper button here let's do this and then we want to navigate based on the actions from the state machine right so what are you talking about oh yeah this is the accessibility stuff don't care about it right now so we got that on click select story right so we're gonna do that again to the term okay uh, whoops that's the wrong button select story uh, right, I should probably probably do it with a full on thing, right? Because we want the ref to the story itself. Okay, send to machine, select story, and we send in the story, right? Okay, uh, so now we need this send to machine thing. This is done. So now here in stories, we have to still pass this send to machine. Okay, now we have to handle that redirect, right? So I guess it would be easier to handle, I mean, we could probably handle it right in place. I know, but we need reference to machine here. So I'm just gonna handle it here, which would mean that I could copy it from the login. And in this case, so let's see, where's, uh, so this is the story. This is what we do. We send this to select story. Where's our state? So we send this to select story, list selected is what we want to handle, right? So um, let me think, I'm just gonna do it at the very end, I guess. So if we are at list selected and um, selected story, right? So here's the problem. This is actually gonna reference our machine, right? So or not actually machine, the service. It's gonna be machine. It's gonna be context, it's gonna be story ID. It is a damn long uh, matcher. Okay, um, red, we need to redirect to dynamically constructed URL, which is gonna be story. And then all that very long ID. Now, what I wanted to do here is, first of all, let's import the redirect. Now, what I wanted to do here is check if we are already at that URL, because we don't want to redirect all the time, right? Um, the way we do that is by using the use location hook, I think. Use location, there we go, yes. Uh, path name is what we want. So const location, path name from use location hook. What do you mean no suggestion? Come on now. Use location hook. Okay, so we got the path name and 
path name not equals so we I, I guess we could pre-construct this whole damn URL somewhere else and just compare it because it's just doing the same thing twice okay um const let's call it story URL right so path name is not story URL and we got the Right, so here's the problem now. Uh, we might not have the machine, so I'm going to use the optional chaining to make this nicer. And now I think that should work if I didn't screw anything up. And I probably did. Each child should have a new property. Where did I screw up the children? Um, so, okay, we did that. Uh, this should work fine. When did I screw up the children? Was it stories? Oh, oh, right. Okay. I'm putting the key on a wrong thing. Right. There we go. Okay. This loads and this does something, but we don't really render anything. But it does it. it oh, it doesn't change the URL actually. Okay. So we send the select story to the machine and then we send the story. So which means that it does not navigate it for some reason. Okay. So let's try to log that. Uh, select story triggered, right? Am I sending it to the correct machine? I think I am, right? Apparently I am not. Um, did I misspell the select story thing? Let me see stories, select story, story, yes, send to machine. So we do have this send to machine thing that we pass to stories. That looks correct. On click, select story, yeah. So, okay, let's check here. Selecting story. I probably missed something very obvious, but uh, we're gonna find it in a second. Okay, so this is actually dispatched, right? So we got the select story that is indeed sent to machine. That should target list selected. Um, am I running the actions in the wrong place? Wait a second. Uh, do, 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 toggle and active. Um, so actions, actions, actions. There we go. On trigger actions activate. So yeah, that should work perfectly fine, right? Um, assign action. There should be. Um, I had an example with an assign action, but I think that should work. Action send. Yeah. So assign action should work just fine. Why are you not working? Here's the question. Okay, so we got the select stories. This seems to be working. Or rather, does it actually trigger the selected state? And the machine loads stories. Okay, so let me think for a second. We are sending the events to the machine. The only question is why it doesn't actually switch the thing, right? So we got the lists, we got the state selected. So this this is perfectly fine because if the state would not exist, the machine would complain. Now, for some reason, it doesn't create the action. So let's just lock the event here. Then it doesn't even get there, right? So let's get this, we click on this and nothing happens. I guess we also should prevent the, uh, prevent the default events. Sounds like a good idea to remove those hashes from appearing. Uh, prevents default. Okay, what am I missing now? Let's just check this. Okay, now nothing appears. It's a good thing. So now we have to figure out why the hell does this not triggered? Select the story list selected. Yes, this should be perfectly fine. Right, and then, hmm. I mean, why are you not happening? Am I just, what am I missing? So we got the, um, okay, wait a second. Let's just look at the action docs and it notes events, right? So this should be an event on three state transition. Yeah, there we go. There's our transitions. There's the conditions. Oh, wait a second. Did I screw it up? Do you have to run the action on the, wait a second. Do I have to run it on the state itself? Uh, oh man, I forgot how that works. Oh no, I, I like I used it how two hours ago basically to write my own stuff and I completely forgot how that works. <laughs> oh my God. 
Oh, let me think for a second. So states, targets, yeah, so we got the trans transitions, null events. Key type, yeah, 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 transitions. So, okay, there's our transitions. Selecting enabled state. So this is the state event descriptors, internal transitions. Yeah, that's fine. It's just definitions, actions. Okay, so it should still execute the action. Now, why it doesn't execute the action is the question here. Okay, let me try to figure it out. So we got this and theoretically we should be able to pass the list of actions here, right? Console log um, select story. Did I scrub the creation of the machine somehow so it doesn't? Okay, yeah, that looks fine. Init oath. So we are in the list states. Um, let's, okay, so let's try, first of all, let's try to move it out, I guess. Uh, I don't think it's a good place to make it in the list. So let's go with stories. Oops. And then we got this selected. First of all, that makes more sense, right? Second of all, I don't think that's gonna fix it, but at least it's gonna fix my brain. Okay, there we go. There's some errors. So because yes, there is no selected. Oh, right. I forgot the states again. Ta -ta -ta. There we go. Okay. So yeah, right. So this still doesn't trigger it, although it actually should. So there is yeah, the second one is completely empty. Why are you not working? What am I missing? I had like, this is the kind of problems that I get with X state sometimes because it kind of makes sense in my head, but then I start working on it and then something doesn't behave as I expect it to. But most of the time is because I messed something up and it's likely the case here as well. So, um, right. So we got, is, is that, am I putting the correct assign now? Yes, I am. Right. The assign is correct. Um, on select story. So, okay, let me think. I mean, right, let's try to lock. Let's actually change the, does it change the state? Is my question. So it's, it's, it's now story selected, right? And then we got, okay, I don't care about the past name. I just care about the state. So did I? False, false, false. If I press that, it doesn't even update. So it doesn't, is it, wait a second. Does it not pass the, send to machine. So this does, okay, this, here's the question. Does send to machine actually a correct function in this case? Whoops. Is that the problem? That shouldn't be the problem, right? Okay, that looks fine. So it is definitely the function that we want to execute. Is that because I'm doing that? Wait a second. Are you not liking the whole like, oh, God damn it. Come on now. Okay, so we wanted an object there. <laughs> Freaking hell. Okay, that was the problem. I guess you cannot give it directly the, I, have, I haven't tried that before. So I always use the object notation because I had more things to send. Right, this was driving me nuts a bit. I guess it somehow corrupted the, uh, the way it works. So we actually want events uh so we got events and then we want event story right in this case right okay so there we go login click this and it just makes everything disappear why does it makes everything disappear so we are all oh, right because this one is looks at least right okay because we're now switching states which is not something we actually want to right okay so list success um let's just do this change this and stay okay if there's any stories stories length is more than zero so i'm not going to render this based on state but rather based on if we have any stories okay so now we got this now we got the story selected so we should fix that or is selected so that now should render the story thing eh? Okay, state of undefined. 
Right, okay, so this works and it starts to render the story. So why is, okay, selected story. Let's try to console log that. Um, I'm probably again screwing something up. So we got our interpreter that seems to be working just fine. Um, question is, why are you complaining? So we got story, selected story. This is our machine, right? and um okay we don't we're, we're done with this finally so we return the machine uh, let's see so we are spawn this machine yeah that's i think that that looks correct let me just have a look at the documentation real quick for the actors so spawning machines uh, assign yes yeah, so you return spawn of the specific machine which is exactly what we did which is we get an interpreter, so that makes perfect sense. We got our story, which is why are you now not happy? Uh, so let's try to figure that bit out now. Okay, I still need this bit. Let me just move it here. So, right, okay. So you were saying state of undefined. What is state of, okay, console log. Am I just again doing something silly that I'm not supposed to do and it just bugs out because I missed one obvious thing? Undefined, undefined, uh, okay. Am I using the correct property here? Oh, God, oh, I'm an, right. of course. <laughs> I just used a differently named property. God freaking damn it, there we go. Are we working now? Now we're working, there we go, cool. So now we <laughs> finally, after all the struggles, we selected a different state machine, right? So now we got our story and uh, now we actually let's let's load the comments right so we got um the hacker news api for comments so this is our comments url it's const uh get comments url right it's gonna be id and it's gonna return we don't care about this pretty printing id right so this is our uh, comments loading so we got our init state and we're gonna get comments i guess we can just do loading comments i guess we can just do loading because really we won't really do anything else so we're gonna have comments which is an empty array in this case and okay let me for, first of all let's just uh let's make this a bit nicer and uh print like the title and stuff just so that okay h2 this is gonna be story title there we go okay so we got that that doesn't doesn't seem to oh yeah probably because of the side so okay you know what whatever that's fine i don't care about css right now we are perfectly fine all right so now we need to load and render the comments it means first of all we got to grab the comments here let's do the comments printing uh, and next thing we got to render, like we got to fetch the comments. So let's do auto fetching, right? So we got this loading state. We're going to define the uh, invoke service here. I'm going to copy it from Awuth again because I am lazy. So this is going to be fetch comments. Going to do fetch comments. Memes, what kind of memes? I mean, I'm all in for memes. So we're going to have an async function again that... Uh, is context and events so we don't really care about event in this case but we do care about the context here so i might as well kill the event right and um url is gonna be get comments url using context um story id so this is gonna be our comments url right result is gonna be await fetch url then r r json and I'm just going to return the results and I'm going to console log it for now because I have no idea what it returns. Hopefully something useful. So we fetch the comments and then we need to define the state success again and we need to define the state fail. I also need a sign function. Um, right, it's probably going to import it from the wrong place again. So I'm just going to be do it manually. And in this case, it's going to be comments and error is going to be error. Okay, cool. Now here's the thing. So if we go back here and if I click on that, it's not going to load anything, right? Because we're not triggering that state transition. But um, 
what we do is we start with this init state, right? So what we can do is we can say that on enter this state. So whenever we enter this state, which is going to switch to loading immediately. And we could also specify the condition, which is going to say only do that if context comments length is, I mean, and just do that, right? So, so only do this transition if there are no comments loaded. And there we go. There is actually one comment there. There is, why is there only one comment? No, this, this seems to be wrong. Am I using the wrong URL? Uh, let me have a quick look at the chat. Super off topic. How do you get those dots signifying spaces? I think that's the default VS Code's uh, preference, right? Uh, let me see. Um, what was it? Indent. Detect controls, folding strategy, highlights, uh, insert spaces. So there's the render indent guidelines and there is something else. There was a different, like there was a setting, I think. I don't remember, I don't think it was a, a plugin. Blah, 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 break it's colorizer. Yeah, I think it was basically the indent setting in the VS code. So it's, it's a default property. I think it's off by default, but basically it's really easy to flip it on. Okay, anyway, so we got here, we got that. So I think it's loading the wrong thing. Okay, no, it does, it does load the good thing. So why, 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 wait a second. So this is what we get, which looks fine, but it doesn't, that, that's not what it's supposed to rent. What is rendering? Okay, so there we, oh, oh God. Okay, so we now get the, no, it actually is correct. That looks perfectly fine. So this is the comments. And wait a second, am I getting the wrong thing? Comment, uh, story, comment. Oh, that's a fetch for the comment, God damn it. Okay. Parts of it, users. Um, da, 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 items. Story, right. So this is our story rendering kids. Oh, I guess we want the kids bits. Okay. So, okay, so the fetching should be slightly different. Um, let's return an empty thing from now. Render white space. Yes, that's probably it. Thank you. Okay, uh, going back to this. Um, do, 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 let me think. So console log context story. Uh, let's just see. So I, I think we should have the... Um, do, do, do. Story kids. Yeah, so this is what we want, right? Kids story. So let's see. Kids is story context. So we get the kids. We gonna, okay. Const comments is gonna be kids map. So we're gonna map every ID into get comment URL from ID. Again, the same thing, basically map URL into our fetch, uh, whoops, that is too much. Fetch, there we go. And finally, we're just gonna await, promise all, all of that stuff. And I'm gonna return comments, right? So I think that should do it. Okay, let's try that. Hey, there we go. Okay, so it actually works. And now we just need to render that. I'm gonna copy one of the comments so that I know how it looks. And now we're just gonna do uh, comments, map, comments, div. Um, so close the div. She is gonna be probably comment ID, right? Uh, it doesn't have ID, yes, it does have ID. So I don't care about the nested, because I mean, you can basically handle it in the same way we can spawn yet another comment machine, just the one that we have and, and get the kids like this. But for now it doesn't matter. So get the parents, uh, sorry, the text, which means that we just do comment um, text. And uh, by, okay. By comment by. Obviously that is sub-perfect formatting, but um, that's fine. Right, and now we also do the um, handling of 
loading. So we need to show the loading indicator, right? Which in this case means that if we are in a state loading, we're going to show loading. And otherwise, if there is comments, we're just going to render them. So theoretically, that's actually it. There you go. Ob like, obviously, that looks like crap, but <laughs> But it does render and it does work. And uh, I mean, I just absolutely love how the X state uh, allows you to handle the state management. Okay, I think that's uh, that's probably all I have wanted to show you today. We did not touch, no, we did touch on guards actually. We did use the guards in the, uh, doo -doo -doo, where was it? It was a condition we used, right? I remember that. Yes, there was, yeah, we, there you go. So there was a condition uh, for fetching the comments. And um, there's a bunch of other additional features that could be like quite more advanced and helpful, but holy crap, this is just like, um, yeah, X state is just, you know, the same, probably the same revelation I had when I started working with Redux, but while Redux feels cumbersome, X state actually never does, which is just uh, freaking awesome. Let me real quick update the readme. Uh, and push that to the GitHub. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat. Um, let me see, GitHub, we want, uh, no, we want github.com building. Okay, kill that, kill that, kill that. New repo, come on now. This um, example react app with state management using x state by the way i'm by no means an x state expert uh, so i probably screwed up in more than one place and there's a better patterns of doing that but even with my current understanding of it i find it billions of times easier to work with especially when you have a complex apps than well basically any other state solution out there so yeah it's definitely highly recommended and huge thanks to the smaller boot no let's small smaller brute i guess for opening this proposal and um highlighting your state for me because man this thing is is awesome okay um just paste that simple react app with x states used for state management um, and come on now. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so we don't need all of that here. I should probably rewrite that. We don't need all of that. X, we need x state link, right? Um, state, okay. And I probably should have grabbed um, description from something like exploring strappy i guess <laughs> this one is not as good okay so doo -doo 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 -doo, grab that grab the description looks nicer yep okay cool Ripsos tutorial on creating a simple react app with x state used for state management or um, react x state example video. I will have to put the link here later on once this is on YouTube. I'm going to show you how to use x state to build a simple React app. All right, I think that's basically it. The XGS is a yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Generator for readmes because I've been copy pasting that stuff forever. Um, maybe having a generator is not just, is, um, what is wrong with me? Maybe having a generator is not, not such a bad idea. Okay. Git commits basic, um, version, I guess. Yeah. I mean, initial, let's call it initial version. It's fine. It's okay. It's perfectly, perfectly good. Right, uh, I probably need to, where's my repo? I need to do that. But yeah, if you are writing apps in React View or whatever, just do check X state out. It is freaking amazing. All right, I think that's basically it.
So we are we are done here for today. Again, if you guys have any questions, do feel free to throw them into the chat. Doesn't have to be related to what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we'll be more than happy to answer. Tutorial. Um, that will do. Okay. Cool. I'll give you a minute to think. Meanwhile, uh, do I, I can just decrease the size of that. Close this. Uh, don't need that. So we pushed all of this stuff, and I think we're yeah. So uh, do, 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 do. done. Close. Um, okay. Video link in README. Right. Uh, thank you, Kepler. Highly appreciate your feedback. Uh, as always. Wouldn't be doing this, guys, without you. So there you go. Um, I also spell X state in a <laughs> different way in every every damn instance. God damn it! How does it actually spelled in the documentation? Uh, do, 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 finite state machines. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. What is? How do they spell it officially? Like, is it X state with a capital X or X state with a small? Okay, wait a second. There should be. Okay, so yeah, so it should be capital S and I screwed it up, but you know what, whatever. Okay, it doesn't seem like we have any more questions or suggestions. So that was a nice nearly two hour stream, actually. So that was a uh, pretty long. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. As usual, you can find all the materials on GitHub. If you missed the stream, the VOD will be available on Twitch immediately or on YouTube in a few hours. Um, thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.